What's up everybody? Today we've got the Grand Piano, which is a technology guy. Super excited to jump into. I've heard that this has some of the best technology of any of the other Legos that are out there. So we cannot wait to get this thing built and show you all what it can do in the wrap up video. As usual, a ton of great fun facts and historical information coming at you throughout the time lapse build, including a dark part of the piano's history. So keep an eye out for that. Let's go ahead and get after it. Here we go. Well, I think it is safe to say that I've got a new favorite Lego. As we take a look at the close-up video here, you can tell incredible attention to detail all the way around the exterior, from the strings and the, the damper to the lid, uh, across the board, uh, really, really great job by the Lego design team. Uh, but as I mentioned at the top, the internal workings of this, the technology and the mechanics, the ingenuity that went into that every bit as impressive. Uh, so let's jump to a couple of videos that hit on that. So this first video shows the keys outside of the piano and you basically you can see as you hit the keys, the hammers come up on the other side. Uh, and then I shot a second video here, we'll shift to within the piano where you can see the hammers coming up, simulating hitting the strings uh, and there with the dampers kind of popping up. 
really, really neat functionality there, which then brings me to the technology piece. And I'm gonna flip the piano around here so you can see this light. This Bluetooth light is the module that you use to connect to the app. You press that button, connects to the app, and once you have the app connected, there's a couple of different ways that you can use this piano. So option one, and you'll see here, and you connect to the app, there's two options are to play or to listen, if you can see that. So we'll start with listen. There's 20 songs that you can do. We'll just play one here. Now the sound is coming from the phone, the app and the phone, but you can see that's sending the signal to press the keys. Uh, really, really neat. So the other option is uh, to, to actually play the piano, which is really cool. So there's another 10 songs here that you can play. I'll do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And the way this works is actually when you press the keys, it knows when you're pressing the keys and it'll play the next note in the song. And it doesn't matter what key you press. But if you don't press the keys, it's not gonna play. So it truly is recognizing when you are pressing the key uh, which is really, really neat. So that's kind of the demo of how the system works. And again, 10 songs that you can play, 20 that you can listen to. And if I did not mention it, of course, the seat uh, raises and lowers. So no detail unturned by this Lego design team. Uh, really, really neat there. Now, before we wrap up, I wanted to share a few more things kind of about the evolution of the piano over time. So you saw in the time-lapse video that the mono chord is kind of where this started. That was the first situation where a hammer was striking a string to make sound went all the way back to 6th century BC, which again, super, super interesting. But to hit on a few of the other key evolutions that kind of brought us here, I wanna to go to the hammer dulcimer. Now you can see a video clip here of Ted Yoder from YouTube, and by the way, click on the link in the notes to, and go check out that video. Really, really fascinating. He plays all kinds of different songs, this hammer dulcimer, which was invented around 900 AD. And this is essentially a lot of strings and a couple of hammers, but, but same thing. If you close your eyes, it sounds just like a piano. Uh, you can start to get a feel for what's happening under the hood here. Um, but the hammer dulcimer was used for a long time and is still obviously uh, played and produced today. The second one I want to hit on is the clavichord. So as we show the photo here, this was a transition into the keyboard format. So still hammers under the cover hitting strings, but very much in a keyboard format, uh, which is much closer to the piano. The last one that I want to hit on that visually looks most like the piano, as you can see in the photo here, is the harpsichord. So very, very similar to this. You can see the longer strings, the shorter strings, kind of that's the shape back here. Uh, but with the harpsichord, when you press the keys, it actually plucked the string as opposed to a hammer hitting it. The modern day piano that was invented in 1700 kind of put all of those pieces together, uh, which and it's continued to evolve over the time over the last few hundred years. And one last fun fact, speaking of that evolution, I wanted to show you guys the most expensive piano uh, that was ever made and just a hair over $3.2 million. This piano made entirely of crystal was played just one time for the 2008 uh, Beijing Olympic Games. So really, really neat. That does it for us here with the Grand Piano. I will tell you, if you can see it in the back here, if you enjoyed this, definitely check out the typewriter video. A lot of similar mechanics internally, as you see this thing actually does type, um, but there's a link between the uh, typewriter and the piano that if you watch this video, you will see very, very interesting. Uh, the typewriter was invented a little bit after the piano, but there's definitely a connection there. So check that out. I appreciate you watching.